This right here is a Lexus LC500. And in today's automotive climate, if you will, everything that comes out on the market is either uh, forced induction, some kind of hybrid, or it's an EV. And we all know that the people in charge want all vehicles to become EVs eventually. Which is why I'm extremely excited for today's video because in 2023, you can buy a Lexus LC500 that is not forced induction. It's not a hybrid, although you can buy it as a hybrid. It is not an EV. It has a naturally aspirated five liter V8 under the hood and it sounds amazing. Yep, that is right. Leave it to the Japanese to save the day when American muscle car brands like Dodge stop making their muscle cars and are replacing them with EVs. We can still buy a Lexus Sport Coupe with a naturally aspirated V8. This thing produces 471 horsepower and 398 pound-feet of torque. It's not much to look at because, you know, plastic covers and all that, but yeah. 5 liter V8. We're obviously going to focus on uh, what it's like to drive this awesome car in today's video, but we got to take a quick look here at the design language because it is kind of special. Uh, Lexus spindle grille. I, I never really liked it, but for some odd reason, it suits this car really well. So yeah, pretty much the same with the rear end here. Uh, it's very unique styling. I have to say the taillights and you got to give it to Lexus, you know, because they, they stood strong. Uh, when this car first came out, it actually looks pretty similar to uh, the concept version that we saw before the actual production model. So yeah, big up to Lexus. I mean, this car is definitely unique. We got dual exhaust tips um, and it sounds so good. And in my humble opinion, its profile is definitely its best feature along with the 21 inch wheels. Now usually I do a little hopping out of the trunk segment in every one of my car reviews to kind of, uh, you know, demonstrate that it has good trunk space. We can't do that in the LC500 because it has absolutely horrible trunk space. It is really, really small for a, a car this size. Uh, it's like supercar levels of bad cargo space. So I would have to say that the LC500 is pretty unique in its segment. And I would say that its competitors is the C63 from Mercedes and the M4 from BMW. So when we're talking about the cars in the segment, you rarely hear anything about a Lexus LC500. I honestly feel like this car doesn't get the recognition that it deserves because it truly is unique to its competition. And it's obviously Lexus's fault for, I guess, not marketing this car enough. Because I kind of sort of feel like it, 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 it's a poor man's LFA. Not that you should market it that way, but it kind of is. You, you get a unique feeling when you're driving this car. It's just missing a, a V10. So we're going to take a quick look at the interior and then we'll take it out on the road because this car is all about driving it. But before we do that, I want to thank my friends at LW Automotive for providing this car. They're lending it to me over the weekend like they've done with many other cars so I can uh, film a review for you guys. If you guys are interested in this car or any other vehicle they have to offer, I'll link their uh, contact information and their website in the description below. And it gets really nice when we step inside. So it's got these interesting door handles that you push out like that, open it up, and it's got a gorgeous interior. In the door panel here, it almost looks like it has velvet. And it's like a wineish red, like burgundy. I, I mean, this is obviously a matter of opinion, but I think it looks amazing. And uh, the normal stuff here, the seats are uh, perfectly bolstered, in my opinion, at least for my size. We got red leather. We got a carbon sill plate and a very cockpit feeling driver's position, I have to say. These interesting handles on each side, one for the passenger and one for the driver. And it is a Lexus, so the quality should be good because Lexus is a luxury brand and it does feel uh, very you know, high end. So the stitching and just the quality and the leather and when you touch things, except for these buttons up here. This is for the different drive modes that we'll go through here shortly and traction control and so on. I don't mind the positioning of them, but they look like they 
are coming straight out of like an entry-level Corolla or something like that. We all know that Lexus is Toyota's luxury brand, but they definitely borrow, you know, some buttons from their cheaper cousins, which, I don't know, it kind of takes away from the overall feel. But these vents, they're unique looking. I really like them. You know, it's a sports coupe. Uh, it has a back seat for, I guess, better insurance rates, but people can't really sit back there. Kids can, but not grown-ups. Not a lot of room. So there's not a lot of storage space here. We've got one cup holder, uh, and in here, we've got a little cubby right there. I guess this can dub as a cup holder, sort of. And then we got a little mid console right here. But you know what? All that stuff doesn't really matter because this is, in my opinion, an enthusiast car. It's a driver's car. It is a unique driving experience, and it sounds so good from this naturally aspirated 5-liter V8. Let's take this thing out on the road. So when you start it up, it's almost like an emotion start. It's very like prolonged. I just, it sounds absolutely amazing. And one thing here with this instrument cluster that I gotta show you guys, maybe no one else will think about this, but I, I love, I think it's so cool. When you wanna toggle through the functions here in the instrument cluster, you hit this button. You hear this mechanical sound when the whole tachometer moves. And I mean, that is just so cool. I absolutely love it. And then we have the little buttons up here to switch the different driving modes. So we have Comfort, and then we have Eco, Boring, and then we have Sport, and then we have Sport Plus, which changes up, obviously, the look of the tachometer. Another cool thing is that whether you have it in Comfort or Sport Plus, what I've noticed is it doesn't really change anything with the exhaust. It's just as good sounding in Comfort. <laughs> It's like the engineers were like, you know, we're not gonna budge on the sound no matter what drive, driving mode they're driving the car in. We're not gonna have a quiet mode, although it is quiet when you're just, you know, driving around normally. I just, I, I think it's so cool. All right, so we got it in Sport Plus. The way to put it in gear is you pull it to the left and then down, and then it goes into drive, and then we're gonna put it in manual as well because it has a 10-speed automatic transmission. Uh, and manually it shifts really, really quick. <laughs> oh, listen to that. This is from a Lexus <laughs> that is completely stock. This is insane. Listen to these downshifts. Listen. Oh, ho, ho. Oh my God. I mean, how awesome is that? <laughs> oh, ho, ho. <laughs> I mean, this car is so unique. I cannot understand why I've waited so long to experience this car. I mean, it's amazing. Oh. Fighting for traction, listen to that. <laughs> oh, I love it. Now I've heard uh, conflicting information regarding how quick this car is from zero to 60. Lexus apparently says that it can do it in three seconds, which I, I sorry, I don't believe that. Uh, it struggles too much with traction and maybe I'm just not a good enough driver uh, from a standstill. Uh, but the, the more, you know, realistic number is probably around four, four and a half seconds, which is very good for a car, you know, that doesn't have any kind of forced induction. It is naturally aspirated. And, you know, it, it's a Grand Tour sports, coupe 
you know, that's very comfortable. I think the clientele that buys this car, you know, they're not typically performance car owners. So it, it obviously does have a more sophisticated feel to it. It's not like a, you know, pure sports car. Um, so you can kind of expect that from the way that the car handles. You know, but with this power plant, I feel like you have to somewhat be a purist because it, it's loud in stock format. Some people won't, you know, like that. It's not ear deafeningly loud, but you know, a lot of people are not gonna like that. You have to be like a car person to understand this car, in my opinion. <laughs> Dude, this is so awesome. Can you imagine the possibilities of this car when it has an exhaust? Ooh! I saw some videos on YouTube, but that's just something I would wanna experience in real life. I mean, this LFA inspired tachometer is just, it's really cool. I gotta say, man. for traction man all the time So the LC500 is definitely unique and it's a car that needs to be experienced. If you're in the market for maybe not this car, but something in the same segment, the same size, you should definitely take a look at the LC500 because there's nothing like it. I hope you guys enjoyed today's review. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And thanks again to LW Automotive for making today's upload possible. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.